This is a skin with the basal cell carcinoma. This tumor is extremely common. It is the most common cancer in human. It is related to sun exposure. Therefore, we can see it often in head and neck region of older individuals. Prognosis is usually excellent. Uh, basal cell carcinoma can infiltrate to deeper structures, but uh, the metastatic potential is very low. Practically, this tumor almost never metastasizes. Uh, therefore, complete excision is sufficient treatment. It is a slow-growing tumor, but if left untreated, it can infiltrate deeper structures like muscles, nerves, and bone, and these cases can be very difficult to treat. Um, we see some extremely large infiltrated basal cell carcinomas from time to time, so uh, people should know that it is okay to wait a few weeks to see the doctor, but waiting 10 years with this disease is probably not a good idea. Um, here we see the most common nodular subtype of basal cell carcinoma. It is composed of solid nodules or nests of basaloid cells with uh, characteristic clefts or retraction artifacts in between the nests and the adjacent stroma. These nests are attached to the epidermis in multiple sites. On higher magnification, we can see that the malignant cells have oval nuclei and low amount of cytoplasm. Uh, they look very similar to the normal cells in the basal layer of the epidermis. That's why we call them basaloid cells, bluish looking cells, uh, unlike the cells of the squamous cell carcinoma where those cells resemble more the keratinocytes in the upper part of the epidermis. Uh, there are numerous mitotic figures here and here, and also apoptotic figures from here and here. The basaloid cells in the periphery of the solid nests are arranged perpendicularly to the border, and they are close to each other. All of them ver have very similar orientation. It resembles picket fence, and it is also called palisading, like a palisade. And um, it is one of the characteristic features of the basal cell carcinoma. Around the tumor, uh, there is typical stroma with uh, fibroblasts and also some inflammatory cells like plasma cells and lymphocytes. The stroma has um, typical slightly bluish or slightly basophilic appearance. And here again, the clefts or retraction artifacts that are formed uh, during preparation of the slide. Uh, they are not real, they are artifact, but uh, uh, it is the sign that it's very helpful uh, in diagnosing basal cell carcinoma. So this is the most common nodular subtype. Superficial type, also sometimes called superficial multicentric type of basal cell carcinoma is characterized by superficial nests attached to the epidermis, commonly separated um, um, by areas of uninvolved epidermis here and here. The subtype does not involve deeper structures, therefore the excision could be uh, superficial as well. On the other hand, infiltrative types are composed of small cords and nests which are deeply invasive this is an example of uh, deeply invasive basal cell carcinoma. We can appreciate how deep uh, these malignant structures are localized. Here we have the specific variant of the basal cell carcinoma, so-called pincus tumor. Some authors call it fibroepithelioma of pincus. Uh, it is usually elevated above the surface of the adjacent skin. It creates this papule and it is composed of thin strands and cords of basaloid cells that anastomose in a net-like pattern. So it looks like this, in between the thin strands and cords there is, uh, there is a typical um, desmoplastic stroma. Uh, the cells are basaloid with palisading in the periphery with characteristic retraction artifacts. Another example of fibroepithelioma of pincus, so elevated lesion made out of thin strands. 
of basaloid cells, like retraction artifacts, palisading, and these threads anastomose together in a net-like pattern. This type of basal cell carcinoma is called morpheiform, or also sclerosing or desmoplastic type. It is infiltrative type, formed by relatively thin strands and cords associated with dense scler sclerotic stroma. So this is the stroma and here we have the malignant cells and uh, here we can see how close to the margin it gets. All of these different subtypes of basal cell carcinoma are important for the pathologist. Uh, pathologists, so uh, we need to know how they look like so we can diagnose um, we can make a, a right diagnosis but for the dermatologist uh, it is sufficient to differentiate between superficial and more infiltrative patterns because infiltrative types are associated with more aggressive behavior uh, the most important information is of course uh, whether the tumor is completely excised or whether the re-excision is necessary okay so that was a a brief description of basal cell carcinoma and thanks for watching.